Hi everybody, this is Jill from D&J Farming. This is episode 3 of my No Man's Land playthrough. So I came in here pretty early and did a little prep work before. As you can see, our money's way higher than it was last time. I think when I came back in the game, after last episode, I had about $6,000, and now we're at 113000 The first thing that I did was I went through and I got rid of all of these trees because I think this is where I'm gonna put my bunker silo I sold 21 trees and made a total of seventy six thousand seven hundred and twenty six dollars I also went through and I got rid of this wood crusher cell point that they gave us because it it's not really going to be any use of, for me right now, or anymore, and you'll see in a minute why. Heading down to the store now to return an item that I leased to help me cut down the trees is the Brooks All-in-One Tree Mulcher. Basically what it does is it cuts down trees and creates wood chips so it has a chute on it and it shoots the wood chips into a trailer that you have connected behind you. We're coming up on two things that I put in. There's the BGA and there's a sawmill. So I, I did add the money for the sawmill, the BGA and the wood, uh, wood chip cell point and the land but I made sure after that that my money was still the same. The reason I did that was because I'm not going to use the land and I wouldn't wouldn't buy these if I was going to sell stuff to them. So that's why I did that. So this land, I do own 46, but I don't technically own it and I won't do anything on it until maybe later and I can just subtract 85,000 from my account. And I do that using easy development commands. So right here you can add and subtract however money you however much money you want. So like if I wanted to add a thousand dollars, thousand dollars gets added. And then same thing, just put a negative sign and you can take away a thousand dollars. So that's something nice to have. I don't really know if I've gone over that yet. But yeah, we're going down to the shop and we're going to return that all-in-one. And then I think I'm going to buy the mower and I'm going to buy a milling machine to pick up my grass. And then I'm going to place my bunker silo. I think I'm just going to go with the small one for now. I don't necessarily need a bigger one. So, that's the goal for today. Maybe cut some grass and ferment it into silage. So here's the all-in-one thing. I think I got it on fs.net. So we'll return that real quick. To lease it, it was, it's under forestry equipment and the tools. To buy it brand new, it's fifty-eight thousand. And to lease it, it is twenty-nine hundred fifty-eight. So it's not too bad. And I just after twenty-one trees, I was so tired of doing that repetitive cutting and loading them into my truck and the trailer behind it, and then bringing it down to the sawmill. It was just very time-consuming. It took about two hours to get all that done. For the wood chips that I sold at the wood chip sell point, I had 26,452 liters, and the price was 347, and I made 9,199 dollars off of that. So it paid for the all-in-one because I just leased it. So we're gonna go into the shop. We're gonna go to mowers. And I'm just gonna buy this front one because I don't really need anything bigger than that for now. So we'll buy that. And then I'm going to go over to miscellaneous, because that's where the milling machine is. And we're going to buy this. I'm just going to leave the colors the same. So that was a total of $24,000. I 
I do believe I can bring them both back at the same time. Hopefully. So get these connected. Maybe. If I can drive. And this can connect to the back, I do believe. Oh yeah. Alright. So instead of having you guys come with me all the way back, I think I'm just going to place this small bunker silo now for $15,000. Popped right up here because I was testing the land first. I didn't actually buy it yet. So I think right here is a, probably a good place for it. Doesn't look like it messed up the terrain, so that's that's good. That's a, probably a first. I did go through and I painted all of this because it was blotchy from where the trees were. You can kind of see it over here where I cut down some more trees. I didn't really, I started over here on this, this side of the house, but I decided that I wanted to put my bunker silo over here, so I focused on this instead. As for my fields go, oh, I was really confused there for a second, and then I realized my tractor was backwards. Anyways, as for my fields, I have soybeans in one, and I believe barley in the other. Yeah, I have barley in the bigger field and soybeans in the smaller field. I think they're on their second growth state, so I should be able to harvest this episode pretty soon, actually. But I think for the time being, I'm going to mow a little bit around my farm. I want to show you guys the real mower mod because that's a real lifesaver because it gets rid of all the bushes and flowers and stuff around your farm so you don't have to go through and paint grass like I used to before I discovered the real mower mod. So yeah, once I get back I'll bring you guys back in to show you a little bit of mowing. Alright guys, we're back at the farm and I got the mower staged. I'm going to show you a little bit about the real mower mod. So, I'm just going to mow this little section of grass right here with the big rock. Just to give you guys a little peek at the, the mod. See how it's completely getting rid of everything? It's just, just a way to get rid of some of the annoying bushes. And in my opinion, it makes makes your farm look a lot better and it gives you grass obviously whoops ran into the work shed obviously it's probably not the same amount of grass as it would be if it was just grass you were cutting but there's some because obviously there is grass underneath all the bushes and stuff but real quick I'm just gonna clean all this up I just wanted to have you guys in here to show you a little bit about the mod. Wow, I just keep running into everything. Yeah, that's looking so much better. Let's see if I can get that bush. Maybe. Maybe change the angle a little bit. Try that. Let's see if that will work better for us. Oh. Turn that back on. Lift it maybe? I don't even know if that works. Yeah. This bush might have to stay. It's just a little bit too close to the rock to get, I think. Obviously, as you can see, I'm trying to get as close to the rocks as possible and I keep running into them. Luckily, things can't get uh, ruined by running into things on this game otherwise I'd be constantly repairing everything that I own so I tend to run into a lot of things alright so now that I showed you guys that I'm gonna go over and I'm gonna probably take care of my sheep I'm gonna just leave that there for now they made they started their first pallet of wool that's that's cool I don't think their water, no, the water's, whoa, whoa, that did not like being put on there. Anyways, their water is not ready yet. It's 
we'll after we clean them up, we'll see how long till that's going to be ready. That is a very nice thing to have, but luckily we do have the Aquatrans in the meantime. So I'm just going to put this back over here. Maybe not in the cones because it didn't really like that too well, too much. Now I'll come over here. Oh, I don't think I'll be able to get through there. Alright. I'm going to have to drive up on this rock a little bit for, for now. Just don't mind me. <coughs> oh. <coughs> Excuse me. And I'm the wrong way. Anyways, to check the progress, you can come in here. Maybe. Where is it? There it is. So it has eight more hours until it's fully installed. So not too much longer, but we'll give them top off their water in the meantime. Oh, I don't know why I disconnected the entire front loader. I, I still need that. Not much water, but they should be full now. So, come over here again to get the front loader. Maybe. There we go. Lift up. Just gonna put this uh, right here for now, I guess. Why not? <clears throat> There's a bale over there. I think it started on their food. Oops, sorry. Drop area, and I moved it trying to clean it when I had a little bucket mishap. So, this probably isn't going to take much because they were probably pretty close to being full as it was. Their cleanliness should go up pretty soon and that will bring their productivity up to 100. I'm just going to leave this bale right here. Probably regret it later. Just like I regretted having it where it was. Also might take out that tree eventually. I don't want to put it that way because if there's too much wool, I can't get to it. So we'll put it back the way it was. Yeah, that's good. Connect the bucket. And then just leave this back over here where it was. Out of the cones so it doesn't do its little dance when I try to connect it again. But hopefully, next time. Oh, come on. Next time we do this, their water will be installed and those cones and those pipes laying on the ground should be gone. But I think I'm going to go around and mow some grass and I'll bring you guys back once I'm starting to pick it up so I can give you guys a little tour of the milling machine. Alright guys, I got all the grass and weeds and bushes and everything cut up around the farm. I think it, it's looking a lot better. It's pretty messy right now, but once we get it picked up, it'll look really good. So this is the milling machine. If you guys have seen Farmer Cop, any of his videos, you I guarantee you know what it is. He loves this thing and with great reasoning because this thing's awesome. All you have to do is just drive into anything on the ground and it picks it up and shoots it right into your trailer. It works at a pretty fast rate of speed too. My tractor just can't really handle all of it, so I can't really show you the fast, fast speeds. I think we tested it one time, and you can go about 24 miles per hour with it without it missing any. So I'm just just gonna go around and pick up enough to fill my trailer, and then I'll probably show you guys dumping it into the bunker silo show you that process and then probably won't have you guys back in again until the fields are ready to harvest based on the map it doesn't look like they have much longer to go until they are ready to harvest so it shouldn't take too long I think about about the time that I'm done picking up all this grass I should be ready to harvest so it should work out perfect picks up way wider than it actually like the 
machine itself actually is. You can see off to the left side it's picking up way further out than the actual milling machine itself. So that's another nice thing about it. You don't have to drive right over top of everything you want to pick up. It's just a little bit everywhere right now so it's it's kind of me driving all over the place really. I don't typically like to mow on just like my yard. I like mowing a grass field. It's just easier and less of a hassle I, I guess but I just did it right now because I don't have a grass field and cosmetic reasons. I wanted the bushes gone. They won't grow back. It'll just grow back as grass, so that's nice. I shouldn't have to do this again. I might in the future. I don't know. Depends on if I get a grass field. I was thinking over next to my bunker silo I could put a grass field if I want to, like a small one. I don't really need anything huge. So I am going to need a source of food for my sheep once they run out of the bales. So that's something to think about in the future. Uh, turning this tractor with this trailer is a task, especially around these rocks, and it just just doesn't really want to do it. But we're managing. We're getting it, figuring it out. It's quite a quite a bit of grass here, more than I was expecting to get. I don't really know what I was expecting, but I wasn't really expecting this much. Oh, don't tell me I don't own that land. Uh, so that grass is just going to have to sit there because I don't own that yet. Eventually I would like to buy another plot of land. Either 25 or 27. I usually always tend to go with 25, so I might try getting 27 first this time. Just for something different. Change it up just a little. <clears throat> I don't know why. Do I not own that either? Ugh, you've got to be kidding me. So I mowed in 25, and I don't own it, and it's not letting me pick it up. Which is irritating, but... I'll get over it. It's not the end of the world. I'm just driving everywhere randomly. It's probably driving you nuts, just like it's driving me nuts, but just can't really think about it too much, I guess. I didn't mow all the way back there because I didn't really see the need. It didn't really have that many bushes. This area had quite a few though, so mowed all that. I'm glitching a little bit. Sorry about that. Missed a little bit there. And back here, so we'll get that. Maybe. Oh. Oh. Oh, I'm horrible at backing up. almost a full trailer. This does have a capacity on it too. I, I think it's only like a hundred liters or something like that. Nothing too crazy. So it will, once the trailer's full, it will say 99% full and the 95, 98, however many liters are in the milling machine will pop up and it will just be one like it is right there. But that's that's nice because it does show you. Um, see my my tractor is way underpowered for this full trailer of grass right now. It's not moving fast at all. But it will show you how much is in it, and that's nice. It is nice that it has a capacity too almost full. I think this trailer holds 21,000 liters. Somewhere around there. Oh, come on. If 
I had a higher horsepower tractor, this would work way better. But since it's so underpowered, everything's just going slow. I would recommend putting the pipe in whenever you're transporting because it will find any trailer possible to shoot what it has in it out and it, it can just be irritating. I don't have anything right now, it's just a nice habit. You can really see my backing up skill right there. Backed right into the wall. Oh, and I'm doing it again. Alright, we're just going to leave the milling machine right here for the time being because it's just making this a little bit longer and a little bit more difficult. I leave a little bit of space at the end of the bunker just so when I'm compacting it, it doesn't bleed out into like the outside of it and then when you cover it, it doesn't turn into silage, it stays as chaff and it's kind of irritating. But I like to make a pile at the end and then just add to the pile as I go. But as soon as you dump, the grass turns right to chaff, so that's that's nice. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to pick up the rest of this grass and I probably will bring you guys back in once I'm ready to harvest. Alright guys, I'm back, and as you can see, it is 7.42 in the morning. My crops took way longer than I thought they would to be ready. Okay, I gotta move this um, fertilizer spreader. Of course, I'd park it right in my way. But all the grass is picked up and almost completely compacted in the bunker. I just held off on finishing it so I could show you guys. Alright, now that that's out of the way, I can go get him started on this field over here while I finish compacting and covering the silage. This is soybeans, I believe. Yep, oh, soybeans. Alright, so I've been using him, but this trailer with a little bit of wheat in it, I've just been backing up and going forward. So it was at 97 when I started, and now it's 100%. So you can hop out of the tractor and close blanket the silo. And I did, was fortunate enough not to have any chaff left out. So that's good. I don't have to go pick that up because it drives me insane. So now that that's taken care of, I'm going to probably put the wheat back in the silo. And just stick around, I guess, for him to harvest. And then I'm probably going to plant. We'll look into what we're going to plant next. So. It's a really good price for soybeans, so maybe we'll sell our soybeans on this harvest. Can't do anything past soybeans, can't do sunflowers. It's a good price for canola, too. I think we're going to plant oats this time. We haven't done that yet. We haven't done wheat since the first time, so maybe we'll do oats and wheat this time around. Still probably not going to do anything with the straw because I, s I have a way to pick it up now, but I don't have any place to store it, and I don't really want to buy a baler. I don't really need the, the straw right now, so we'll just keep that off. So we're going to plant wheat in this field, and we'll plant oh, in the next field. It's not going to get him started yet, because he will definitely catch up to the combine, because I believe he goes faster. Oops. Let's check real quick. 
His working speed is 11. Yeah, so he definitely goes faster. This one goes 6. Header goes 6. So we'll just hang out. It won't take him too long. Uh, oh, I did go through the night, so I can go take care of my sheep. Completely forgot about that. If I'm not mistaken, their water should be in fully installed now, so I, I can return my Aquatrans to the store. So that's that's nice. Still not a full tr uh, pallet of wool, almost, but not quite. So that'll probably end up being next episode that we sell our first pallet of wool. So I'll clean these guys up. Oh yeah, water is ready. Disconnect the bucket. Oh, ran right into the bucket, or into the building. Grab the bale fork. Where did my bale go? Um, am I just crazy? Didn't I put my bale right here? It just disappeared? How does that happen? It's not over here, is it? Roll down this little hill? No. Did they take it? They must have taken it. Apparently if it's sitting out here, even though it's not in those lines, or in the box, it still takes it. Hmm. Interesting. So if you look up top, it'll tell you the percentage of water that they have, and all you have to do is hit the left stick to start filling. And over here, well, it was too full to show you for me to get over there in time. But it comes right out of here and into here. So you don't have to worry about using <clears throat> a tanker to fill them anymore. So I guess these bale forks can just get put back over here. So we don't need them. Connect the bucket again because we will need to clean them again. Just leave this here. every time. Oh, that didn't, that wasn't, almost an end bell. And then we'll bring the aqua trans, oh, and I hit it. Bring the aqua, and hit the tree. I am a mess. We will bring this down to the store to return it, because if you remember, it was leased. Not gonna wa worry about the water in it. Water, we, we didn't have to pay anything because we got it out of the lake. <clears throat> I don't remember exactly how much I paid to lease this. I think my leasing um, fee for the night was like $3,092 or something like that. We'll look real quick. Oh, maybe. It's over here. Make sure my guy's back on path. So. It's on here somewhere. Own interest? No. Am I just blind? Oh, right there. Vehicle leasing costs. So it was $3,000. Or, well, wow, $3,053. I am genuinely impressed that he did not run into a single thing while I was in that menu because I was in there for quite a while. <sighs> Probably rapidly approaching the time where I need to buy more seeds and fertilizer. I do have a pallet of fertilizer down here still. And I do have a couple big bags up at the farm, I think. So I'll put him in here. Drive my tractor out of there. And we will return it. So, there's that. 
And we're going to switch over to our truck. He's only 35% full, so maybe we won't switch to our truck. Uh, I don't can't think of anything else that I want to do immediately, so I think I'm going to hold off on doing anything else until next episode. Next episode, I'll start off by finishing our harvest and getting our fields planted. This has been Jill from D&J Farming. Thank you for watching.